In this question, a 50 gram ice cube is dropped into 200 grams of water in a thermally insulating container. If the water temperature is initially at 25 degrees Celsius and the ice is taken from the freezer at minus 15 degrees Celsius, what is the equilibrium temperature? This is a calorimetry problem. Let's just do a little diagram. I've got my thermally insulating container. That basically tells me that no amount of heat is being added to the system or taken away from the system, lost to the environment. That means that everything that happens inside the container, the sum of those heats must equal zero. And what have I got uh, inside the container? I've got some amount of water and I've got a block of ice. And what's going to happen is that the, the to come into equilibrium, the heat is going to flow from the hotter object, which is the water, uh, into the colder object, which is the ice, and eventually these two things are going to reach the same temperature. And that's what we're trying to find out. Now, in order to uh, do this, we need to consider a few possibilities. In fact, probably the easiest possibility here would be that the equilibrium temperature is zero. What that would mean, the heat that comes out of the water at 25 degrees Celsius uh, is uh, insufficient in order to uh, warm up the ice from minus 15 to zero and to melt the ice completely. And if it can't melt the ice completely, then we must end up with an ice water mixture. And we know that an ice water mixture has a temperature at zero degrees. So uh, let's have a look at the, uh, the, the heats that are required for those processes. Uh, we have a, the uh, heat which is required to first of all warm the ice from uh, minus 15 degrees uh, Celsius to zero degrees Celsius. Uh, we have the heat which is required to melt all of the ice Okay, to cause that phase change and then we have the heat which uh, is required to cool all of the water down from 25 degrees down to zero and so let's just go through and have a look first of all at the, uh, the amounts of uh, energy uh, that is required to do all of those so remember that um, heat and uh, has the same units of energy uh, in fact, when we're changing a temperature of, an, of a sample, we know that the heat associated with that is, depends upon the mass of the sample. In this case here, it's going to be the mass of the ice times the specific heat of ice in this case, which is a bit different to water, times by the change in temperature. Now, we know what the mass of the ice is. It's 50 grams. The specific heat of ice is equal to 2,050 uh, joules uh, per kilogram. Uh, per Kelvin, uh, not to be confused with the specific heat of water above zero degrees, uh, which is uh, 4184 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. We'll need that later on as well. So let's uh, go back to our expression up here. The mass of the ice was 50 grams, so putting that into kilograms, so it's the same uh, unitly consistent, uh, multiplied by uh, 2050 multiplied by my change in temperature. So this is T final minus T initial. Uh, T final is 0, T initial is minus 15, so that's multiplied by 0, T final minus negative 15. So 2 minuses make a positive number, uh, so that's equal to a positive number, which is 1537.5 joules. So that's how much energy we have to add uh, into the ice to warm it from minus 15 to zero degrees Celsius. And the fact that it's positive reminds me of adding energy in. That's correct. Okay, uh, we also need to melt the ice. So if I was going to melt the ice completely, that's a phase transformation. Um, the heat associated with that depends upon the mass of the ice once again, uh, and it depends upon the kind of phase change we have. In this case, we've got the latent heat of uh, fusion here. And so we need to recall what the latent heat of fusion is for water. It's uh, 334, which is kilojoules per kilogram. So we're back up the top here, uh, the mass of the ice was 0 0.05, so it's kilograms, 50 grams, multiplied by now um, 334,000 to put that into joules. And that's uh, 16,700 joules. When it comes to phase changes, whether this quantity is a positive or negative is a number you have to decide. And the best way that I like to remember that is that looking at the direction of the phase change. Okay, so here, uh, we're, the phase change we're, we're doing is we're melting. We're going from a solid to a liquid. 
that's the same as if I was adding heat in to change the temperature, to raise the temperature up. So that's going to be a positive number. Okay, the third quantity um, I want to look at is the heat associated with cooling the water. So that's going to be the amount of energy to, that we take out of the water to cool it down to zero degrees Celsius. Uh, and we can compare that to, well, that's going to be the heat that goes in to warm up the ice and then melt the ice. So let's compare, uh, compare those ones. Um, in this case here, that's the mass of the water, which is uh, 200 grams now, times by the specific heat of water, which is our uh, 4184, multiplied by its uh, change in temperature. So I might just go down one line for a bit of space here. Uh, so I've got 200 grams, so 0.2 kilograms, times by 4184 joules per kilogram per Kelvin, multiplied by my change in temperature, so T final minus T initial. And I'm assuming here that I'm cooling all the way down to zero degrees. So that's going to be zero minus 25. So T final is zero, T initial is 25. So you'll see in that case here that we've got a negative number that's going to come out. That's minus 20,920 joules. So if I compare these three numbers, what this tells me is that uh, the amount of energy that the water has to give up in order to cool down from 25 degrees to zero degrees is in excess of that required to both raise the ice from minus 15 to zero and melt the ice completely. So in fact, because I've got enough energy to melt the ice completely, therefore I also must have a little bit of energy to raise up the, the water, which is at zero degrees Celsius, to a higher temperature. So my equilibrium temperature can't be zero degrees, it's got to be above it. But now that we know that the equilibrium temperature must be above zero degrees Celsius, we can go and, and find that out. Once again, uh, we use the sum of my heats must equal to zero, and now we can take into account all of the processes as an additional one that's going to go on now. Okay, so first of all, we know we've got to uh, warm up the ice, we know we've got the heat associated with melting all of the ice completely. But now there's going to be a heat associated with uh, warming up the water, uh, that which was the ice which has been uh, liquefied. That amount of um, water has to be warmed from zero degrees up to the final temperature. Okay, we don't know what that is just yet. And also we have to worry about the heat that is going to be extracted from the water that's the 200 grams of water, uh, which is initially at 25 degrees Celsius, and now it's going to be cooled down to that final temperature. So let's give ourselves a little bit more space here. I might, because we've evaluated some of these already, we might just put these numbers in. So the heat associated with warming the ice and melting the ice is the sum of these two. Okay, 1,537.5 plus 16,700. And that's uh, this number here. Plus, now, the heat which is associated with warming that uh, ice, so that's going to be mass of the ice times by the specific heat of water now, because it's at zero degrees Celsius, uh, times by the change in temperature, and that's going to be T final, well, that's my equilibrium temperature, is the final temperature, minus T initial, in this case the water was at zero degrees Celsius. And then we've also got the mass of the original 200 grams of water times by the specific heat of water multiplied by the final temperature, T final, minus T initial, which in this case is 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we actually know what the all these quantities are apart from Tf, so we can make Tf the subject of this equation here. So what I'm going to do is probably go through and just evaluate this numerically to start with. So 18237.5 plus so the mass of the ice is 50 grams times the 4184 gives me 209.2 times T final, because that multiplied by zero is zero. Plus now we've got the 200 grams of water times the specific heat of water is going to be uh, 836.8, that multiplied by Tf, and then we've got another term here, which is that 836.8 multiplied by minus 25, which gives me negative uh, 20,920 that we have at the top here. Okay, 
Uh, so we're almost there, we just need to make t f the subject, so um, I will make t f the subject by, uh, I can combine these two terms here, take the other two terms across to the left hand side, and minus 20,000 becomes positive 20,000, and then we can subtract off uh, the 18,237.5, that gives me 2682.5. Now uh, that's going to be on the top because I'm going to divide by the number which is out in front of the, uh, this, uh, which is multiplying by this uh, final temperature there. Uh, so 209.2 plus 836.8. So that's uh, 1046. So that ratio there is going to be the final temperature. And if I evaluate that, I get uh, 2.56. Uh, degrees Celsius, uh, which I think, uh, given uh, the number of significant figures I've been uh, given the problem, uh, it's probably 2.6 degrees Celsius. So I was expecting it to be above zero degrees Celsius, uh, and it seems, uh, seems a fairly reasonable number.